we uh, are going on here with uh, particles and uh, photons and we know they both have energy and because they both have energy we can also look at how both particles and photons can have a wavelength this is a little bit more of a stretch uh, for a photon we know that the wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency that's pretty easy but for a particle it's a little bit more difficult we know that electrons are actually particles uh, they have a little bit of mass not much but they do have a little bit of mass but we've observed these as also being wavelengths so you could have a packet of electrons and they actually have a wavelength so for a particle which has actual mass the equation does still work where we can say that the wavelength is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum where the momentum for a particle is just mass times velocity so this is what we call the de Broglie wavelength and everything has a de Broglie wavelength as long as it has mass on the next slide we'll look at that a little bit um, we can confirm this through a experiment called the Davison Germer experiment they verified that electrons as we were just talking about do have wave properties because they diffract if you remember in the diffraction experiments that we've done before you have a slide and in that slide you've got all these little lines that are very very close to each other and if you pass light through that you actually get a pattern on the back wall if you do that with electrons so that let's say that this is a beam of electrons you get that same pattern on the wall and that proves that electrons do have a, uh, a diffraction or they have a, uh, a uh, oh shoot they have wave like properties so electrons are shown on a nickel surface and that uh, acts like light uh, and they act a lot like light in order that they diffract and you see that interference so you see these bright dots on the wall if you pass it through a nickel surface uh, the best way to really look at and see how kind of funny this is is looking at an elephant if you have an elephant and it's moving it has momentum and if it has momentum we can actually find its wavelength and the wavelengths are very 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 small for um, for an elephant so the momentum we know is equal to h over lambda where lambda is equal to h over p p is momentum so we plug in our mv and this is the equation for the de Broglie wavelength the wavelength then is equal to h remember it's 6.625 times 10 negative 34th we just divide that by the mass times the velocity and you end up with a wavelength of 2.51 times 10 to the negative 37th meters we're not going to do this one until I am back and so we will look at that later but um, you do knew, you do now at this point need to work on the rest of the problems that are in the homework packet so you should have done several of those last night and now you can go ahead and complete the rest of the packet starting with the problem that has momentum uh, if you actually look at your packet you'll notice that uh, you should have gone all the way through number um, number 32 before and uh, now you can go to number 39 go ahead and do 39 all the way through number 66 um, you'll have to look up the masses of the electron and the proton and then for number 66 uh, the ratio of the wavelength of the two is very easy to do you'll we'll have to find those wavelengths other than that, that's it. If you finish all those problems, please go ahead and work on your uh, AP problems. You're going to find those to be a little bit easier now that we've gone through the entire section. You want to do as many of those as you can have time for. And that should be the end.